when Joachim woke on the 13th of December, his mother and father were in his room already. Joachim knew they were as curious as he was to see what was in the advent calendar. You get to open it, my lad, said Papa. Joachim sat up and fished out the folded piece of paper. The picture in the calendar showed a rainbow. He sat in bed with Mama on one side of him and Papa on the other. They both leaned over him while Mama read what was on the sheet of paper. A little procession was running down the steep mountains in the Alps from the St Bernard Pass. They spent only half a second in each place. For they were running, not just down the steep slopes towards Val d'Aosta in northern Italy, they were speeding down through history too. So a party of monks, who were on their way up from the Val d'Aosta one day in June in the year 998, saw them for only a short moment, just as lightning sweeps across the sky, pouring out a flood of light over the landscape for a second or two. Look! exclaimed one of the monks. What? asked the other. I thought I saw a strange procession on its way down through the valley. There were people and animals. Behind them all ran a little girl with an angel. The third monk agreed. I saw them too. It was like a heavenly host. The monk, who had seen nothing, shook his head in disbelief. Are you sure you can stand the thin air up here? he asked. He said that because he had looked down at Azalea at the instant when the pilgrimage had passed. Four years earlier, a party of merchants from Milan had seen the same as the two monks. That had been a few kilometres further down the valley. The godly throng stopped for a while to enjoy the view over the beautiful Val d'Aosta. Ethereal pointed up at the Mont Blanc and the sharp peak of the Matterhorn. Elizabeth was more interested in studying the advent calendar that she had been given by the governor of Syria. She pointed at opening number 12, where there was a picture of an advent calendar exactly the same as the one she had in her hand. Turned to Quirinius and asked, Can I open the doors in the tiny little calendar as well? Quirinius shook his head. Unfortunately not. The calendar is sealed with seven seals. Dixie. We are such wise men that we can reveal what is inside it all the same, said Caspar, the first wise man. Something mysterious is written in tiny little letters. Tell me then, said Elizabeth. Behind the first door is written Elizabeth, Caspar began. Behind the second is written Elizabeth. And behind the third, Isabet, then come Sabet, Abet, Bet, and Et. That's the first seven doors. And what then? said Elizabeth with a broad smile. Balthazar, the second wise man, replied, After that come T, Teb, Teba, Tebas, Tebasi, Tebasil, and Tebasile. Then there are only ten doors left. What's behind them? Elizabeth, Elizabeth, Isabeth, Sabet, Abet, Bet, and Et. But then there are still three doors left, said Elizabeth. Caspar nodded solemnly. Behind number door number twenty two is written Roma. Behind door number 23 is written Amor. And behind door number 24, the name Jesus is written in very beautiful and artistic lettering. One letter is red, the second is orange, the third is yellow, the fourth blue and the fifth violet. Altogether that makes all the colours of the rainbow. Jesus was like a whole rainbow. Why? When it's been raining heavily and the sun breaks through the dark clouds, the rainbow appears in the sky. It's as if a little bit of Jesus is in the air, for Jesus was a rainbow between heaven and earth. Joshua lifted up his shepherd's crook and struck a stone with such force that it echoed all round the mountains. To Bethlehem, he said, to Bethlehem. And it was as if the mountains replied, Lechem, 
Lehem. Lehem. It didn't take long for them to reach the valley of the Po. That's the name of the fertile country that lies around the great river Po, which flows from the Italian Alps in the west to the Adriatic Sea in the east. Ephiria told them they would be going the same way as the river. They travelled through the countryside until the river Po met another big river called the Ticino, nearing the trading city of Pavia. Ephirio told the, them that the angel watch showed 904 and that Pavia was already a university that was famous throughout, un, throughout Europe. Joshua was about to strike the ground when his shepherds, with his shepherd's crook in order to say something. Elizabeth was about to say, but Jacob the shepherd spoke first. He pointed down at a large raft that was lying by the riverbank and said, we'll borrow that. So the whole of the long procession of pilgrims jumped on board the raft. As they were about to push off from the bank, a man came running towards them with a sheep in his arms. Accept my sincere offering, he said. So six sheep had to be crammed together on the narrow raft. When they were out on the river, Quirinius said that Elizabeth could open door number 13 in the advent calendar. And behind it was a man carrying a sheep. When Mama had finished reading, the family sat on the bed for a long time without saying anything. Lehem, 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 said Mama at last, almost as if she were singing it. Sabet, Tibas, said Joachim. He surprised himself. There it was again. John had in fact mumbled half Elizabeth's name and he had never thought of it before. But then he said the same half of her name backwards. But why had he done that? Papa had something to say too. If only I could find this flower seller, maybe we'd find the answer to how this advent calendar was made. Or why, as far as that goes. I'm curious to find out what makes a grown man sit clipping and gluing and playing with letters in that way. I'm sure it's in order to spread some of the glory of heaven, observed Joachim. I believe the magic advent calendar is a small part of the glory of heaven that has strayed down to earth. Up there it's so full of wonderful things that they can easily be scattered. Mama and Papa couldn't help laughing. It was only after they had read through all the folded sheets of paper that they had understood why Joachim had said so many strange things recently. I'm thinking about the three monks in Val de Osta, said Mama. Papa and Joachim looked at her. Then she said, we are sitting here almost like those monks. We have something on our hands and we don't know quite whether we can believe it. Joachim could no longer manage to keep his meeting with John secret. It was as if the last little secret was exploding inside his head, so it was good to let it out. John was at the gate one day when I came home from school, he said. He got our address from the man in the bookshop. And you didn't tell us, said Papa. I didn't think it was important. He only wanted to know who I was. Yes, yes, but what did he tell you? said Papa impatiently. He must have said something about the magic advent calendar. He said it wasn't Christmas yet. Then he said he'd tell me more about Elizabeth another time. Papa nodded. I'll drop by the market again today. I intend to meet this John even if I have to lasso him. But when he got home, he could only throw up his arms. Gone, he said, as if the earth had swallowed him up. All that afternoon, Joachim repeated two names inside himself. Elizabeth. Tebasili. Elizabeth. One name was like a reflection of the other. But when Joachim looked at himself in the mirror, he saw himself even though the picture in the mirror was reversed. Could it all be a secret message that the two Elizabeths were one and the same person? But Tiba Seely sounded like a proper name too. Could there be somebody called Tiba Seely as well? That evening Joachim lay for a long time, staring up at the ceiling before he could relax. 
in the end, he had to get up and write something in his little notebook. It was something that he had seen inside his head. He wrote.